Welcome to week six. Last week we discussed prediction models, and this week we're going to focus on a type of prediction models called behavior detectors. In the remainder of this week, we're going to discuss ground truth, feature engineering for behavior detection, knowledge engineering versus data mining, and diagnostic metrics for evaluating prediction models, not just behavior detection, but prediction models in general. So even if you're not that excited by behavior detection, you still might be interested in some of these themes of feature engineering, whether you use knowledge engineering versus data mining, and what are some good diagnostic metrics. In the next lecture, we'll talk about ground truth for behavior detection. Behavior detectors are automated models that can infer from log files whether a student's behaving in a certain way. We've already discussed examples of this, including off-task behavior and gaming detectors, in the San Pedro et al. case study in week one. Some of the behaviors that people have detected already using learning analytics and data mining methods include disengaged behaviors like gaming a system, which is when a student subverts properties of the software's helper feedback to get through without learning. For example, if the system has bottom-out hints uh, entering 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 38, or um, if the system has hints that eventually give you the answer, just going click, click, click to get the uh, correct answer, type it in, click, 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 click on the hint to get the answer, type it in, and so on. In other words, strategies that involve succeeding without learning. Off-task behavior is another type of disengaged behavior. People can actually infer from long files whether a student who's paused is talking to their neighbor or the teacher about the math. Carelessness, um, or more accurately, careless errors, is a student making errors that aren't due to their lack of knowledge, but are due to simply not trying to get the correct answer hard enough. And finally, what we call WTF behavior, which stands, of course, for without thinking fastidiously. WTF behavior consists of doing actions within the learning system that are not targeted towards the learning task. So by contrast to off-task behavior, where the student disengages entirely from the learning task, in WTF behavior, the student is um, still working with the system, but doing something unrelated. For example, a student is supposed to be plotting points, might draw a smiley face. Or uh, in a virtual world, um, John Rowe and Jen Saborn and James Lester have this nice example where in a virtual world where you're supposed to be figuring out why people are dying of a disease, instead students are going to a virtual tree, climbing the virtual tree, getting virtual bananas, going and putting them in the virtual toilet and trying to flush them out of the toilet for a half hour. Not a behavior associated with an attempt to learn the material. Another thing that people have uh, studied is metacognitive behaviors. So for example, help avoidance when a student really needs help, but instead decides not to ask for it. And unscaffolded self-explanation, where a student, after getting a message about why they're wrong, or getting a hint, instead of kind of just moving on, carefully stops and thinks through it. And exploration behaviors, which Amerishi and Kanadi studied in a landmark paper in the first issue of the Journal of Educational Data Mining. A related problem is sensor-free affect detection. It's not quite the same conceptually, but the methods turn out to be quite similar. And people do things like detecting whether a student's bored, whether they're frustrated, whether they're in a state of engaged concentration, and whether they're in a state of delight.